If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the old memories of the past and you will be predictable in your life. And if you wake up in the morning and you're not being defined by a vision of the future, as you see the same people and you go to the same places and you do the exact same thing at the exact same time, it's no longer that your personality is creating your personal reality. Now your personal reality is affecting or creating your personality. Your environment is really controlling how you think and feel unconsciously. Because every person, every thing, every place, every experience has a neurological network in your brain. Every experience that you have with every person produces an emotion. So some people will use their boss to reaffirm their addiction to judgment. They'll use their enemy to reaffirm their addiction to hatred. They'll use their friends to reaffirm their addiction to suffering. So now they need the outer world to feel something. So to change then is to be greater than your environment, to be greater than the conditions in your world. And the environment is that seductive. So then why is meditation the tool? Well, let's sit down, let's close our eyes. Let's disconnect from your outer environment. So if you're seeing less things, there's less stimulation going to your brain. If you're playing soft music or you have earplugs in, less sensory information coming to your brain. So you're disconnecting from your environment. If you can sit your body down and tell it to stay like an animal, stay right here. I'm gonna feed you when we're done. You can get up and check your emails. You can do all your texts, but right now, you're gonna sit there and obey me. So then, when you do that properly, and the, you're not eating anything, or smelling anything, or tasting anything, you're not up experiencing and feeling anything, you would have to agree with me that you're being defined by a thought. So when the body wants to go back to its emotional past, you become aware that your attention is on that emotion, and where you place your attention is where you place your energy. You're siphoning your energy out of the present moment into the past and you become aware of that, and you settle your body back down in the present moment, because it's saying, well, it's eight o'clock, you normally get upset because you're in traffic around this time, and here you are sitting, and we're used to feeling anger, and you're off schedule. Oh, it's 11 o'clock, and you really check your emails and judge everybody. Well, your body's looking for that predictable chemical state. Every time you become aware that you're doing that, and your body is craving those emotions, and you settle it back down into the present moment, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind that you're the mind, and now your will is getting greater than the program. And if you keep doing this over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, just like training a stallion or a dog, it's just gonna say, I'm gonna sit. And the moment that happens, and the body's no longer the mind, when it finally surrenders, the liberation of energy, we go from particle to wave, from matter to energy, and we free ourselves from the chains of those emotions that keep us in the, in the familiar past. And we've seen this thousands of times. In fact, we can actually predict it now on a brain scan. The hardest part is to teach our body emotionally what the future will feel like ahead of the actual experience. So what does that mean? You can't wait for your success to feel empowered. You can't wait for your wealth to feel abundant. You can't wait for your, your new relationship to feel love or your healing to feel whole. I mean, that's the old model of reality of cause and effect, you know, waiting for something outside of us to change how we feel inside of us. And when we feel better inside of us, we pay attention to whoever or whatever caused it. What that means then is that from the Newtonian world that most people spend their whole life living in lack, waiting for something to change out there. The Newtonian world is all about the predictable. It's all about predicting the future. But the quantum model of reality is, is about causing an effect. The moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. The moment you're in Empowered and feel it, you're beginning to step towards your success. The moment you start feeling whole, your healing begins. And when you love yourself and you love all of life, you'll create an equal. And now you're causing an effect. And I think that's the, the difference between living as a victim in your world saying, I am this way because of this person or that thing or this experience. They made me think and feel this way. When you switch that around, you become a creator of your world and you start saying, my thinking and my feeling is changing an outcome in my life. And now that's a whole different game and you start believing more that we're creators of reality. Your body doesn't know the difference between the event that's taking place in your world, outer world, and what you're creating by emotion or thought alone. So most people then, they're constantly reaffirming their emotional states. So when it comes time to give up that emotion, they can say, I really want to do it, but really the body is stronger than the mind because it's been conditioned that way. So the servant now has become the master and the person all of a sudden, once they step into that unknown, they'd rather feel guilt and suffering because at least they can predict it. Being in the unknown is a scary place for most people because the unknown is uncertain. People say to me, well, I can't predict my future. 
I'm in the unknown and I always say the best way to predict your future is to create it. Not from the known, but from the unknown. What thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? 